DFM can be defined as the process of designing a product that can be produced at minimum cost, in addition to having all the other attributes it should have, good utility and function, high quality, and long-term reliability. Jim Bralla, manufacturing consultant, handbook editor, and college lecturer on DFM. Look at these two parts. They are virtually interchangeable, yet one costs 86% less than the other. The primary difference between the two being that one was designed to be easily manufactured while the other was not. There is nothing really new about paying attention in the design process to factors that aid in the producibility of a product. What is new is that this approach has finally been recognized as a key factor in keeping a company's manufacturing competitive. Right now there are all kinds of articles in the technical magazines and in the popular press of successes by American companies in developing and designing products that are internationally competitive as a result of using DFM techniques. Colleges are now beginning to devote courses to this approach and seminars and technical presentations are also popular. Plus, while a lot of the success of Japanese companies has been attributed to their work ethic, much of it actually belongs to superb applications of DFM techniques. A number of shorthand terms have been developed and it would be wise for us to define them. DFM, of course, means designing for manufacturability, an overall term for this approach. DFA, designing for assembly, refers to product design aimed specifically at simplifying assembly operations, often the most expensive in a manufacturing operation. Sometimes we see DFMA, designing for manufacturability of component parts and their subsequent assembly. Simultaneous engineering is an approach that brings both the design and manufacturing engineers together, along with product managers, quality control, production people and others, in order to both facilitate DFM and to speed up the product design cycle. 